and um, I'm going to share my screen. So tonight I'm going to talk about Module 1 for IT140, and I'm also going to introduce you to PyCharm. PyCharm is required to do several of the projects in this class. It is also a very good IDE, or Integrated Development Environment, and it's something if you're going to program later on in Python, you might want to, you know, have some experience with, but it is required for several of the projects in this class. So if you already haven't downloaded PyCharm, you will need to do that by next week. So what are we talking about? When we're talking about programming in a language, we're basically talking about writing algorithms. And an algorithm isn't just a mathematical algorithm. It's really a, a series of logical steps to solve a problem. That's really what a program is. And for us, those series of logical steps are going to be written in Python. Python is a programming language. It's write once, run many, which means I can write it on my Linux box at work and it will run on my Windows laptop or on my Mac laptop, um, which is not the case with every single language. So that's what Python is. And it's also extremely popular in a lot of different industries. Um, there is a large open source community and a large code base that already exists out there for a lot of different things. So, um, so that's what Python, Python is. So we have some basics. Input, process, output. Input is data that comes into the program. A lot of what we're going to do for input on in this class is based on somebody typing something in on a command line. Out in the, out in the real world, I want to say, input can be from a web page. It can be from another program. It can be from a phone. Input can be anything. The important part is, is that once we bring that data into the program, we know what we're going to do with it. Process is, the algorithm process is what you are going to do in your program. That's what process is. Now, when we start, we're talking about the entire program. As we move through this course, you're going to realize that process can be broken up in different ways. For this week, the process is about the entire program. And output is feedback. Because a lot of times you have to give feedback to the professor who's going to be grading your programs, to um, another program that might be calling your program, which is kind of out of the scope of this class, but it's something that happens all the time. So you're going to take in data, you're going to do something with it, and then you're going to give the result of whatever that process was back. And there are several ways to do that, and we'll go through that tonight. Um, by the way, just so that you know with Zybooks, if you're doing some of these participation activities and you check and your answer is wrong, you can redo it. Go. So you can work on these participation activities until you get everything right. Um, just a handy tip. And it's good to go through and do these programming activities. One thing you will not see me do in this class is directly do anything into Zybooks. And that is because all of the instructors, instructors share the same instance of Zybooks. We don't have individual instances like the students do. So I never change anything in Zybooks. If I'm going to show you how to do something, it's going to be in PyCharm. Um, so let's just go programming using Python. Python has what they call an interpreter. And the interpreter is the uh, runtime environment that Python uses to execute the code. Um, and code is just type, it is Python commands. That's all it is. For Python, it's um, a series of commands and 
um, they're talking here about, when they talk about this interpreter prompt, they're talking about typing in the word Python on a command line and having it take you into an interactive prompt. We really won't be doing a lot of interactive prompt in this class. Most of the stuff you're going to be doing is associated with typing it in to uh, Zybooks and running it. So what you see here on my screen is Python code. And the Python code, do I have any questions? Okay. The Python code is just a series of statements. That's all that's on here. Now there are some very specific things that we'll talk about in a little more detail as we go through this module, but I'll introduce them here. First is this pound key. That pound, sorry, the pound sign. The pound sign is a specific command to Python to say ignore this line. Okay? So line one is ignored, line three is ignored, and line four is ignored. Line two isn't ignored, but there's nothing on it, so Python doesn't care about it anyway. Um, lines five and six, and actually eight and nine, are variables that are having values assigned to them. And line 11 through 13 is another variable, and 16 through 18. And then we get down here, and we've got all of this def stuff, which are just functions. So, this, by the way, this is not something you're going to be required to write today. You're going to be, we're going to be doing something much simpler. But this is just an example of what a Python program might look like. So we're going to talk about input and output. And, and those are the two, you know, it's input, process, output. Input, we're getting stuff into the program. Output, we're, in our case, for the most part, we're just going to be displaying something to the user. So a couple things to notice about Python that's different if you've programmed in Java or other languages is Python is space delimited, which means you don't have like, a, you know, when you were writing a sentence, in English, we put a period to show when the sentence ends. There's nothing like that in Python. Python, the Python line of code ends when you hit the return key. And so it's very important to understand that you won't have necessarily any, anything other than that return key to tell Python that it needs to go on to the next line of code. And that becomes important because you can have all kinds of syntax errors if you don't do that right. So, output. We're going to be using this statement all over the place in this class. It's the print statement right here. And print is a function. It's the first function that we're going to use in this class. It is a function that is provided. Can somebody mute, please? I'll go. He's, he's not muted. There we go. Um, Python, we're going to use the print function. Python gives us a whole bunch of functionality that we don't, we don't have to do anything special for. And we're going to learn about some of that in this class. We're not going to learn about all of it. I don't know all of the functionality that Python, Python gives us. The first piece of built-in functionality that Python gives us is the ability to output information to the screen. And that's with the print function. Um, the print function takes an argument, and the argument is a string. A string literal is what Zybooks calls it. So the string literal is just that. It's just a string. So let me give you an example using PyCharm. Like I said, all the examples that I'm going to do are using PyCharm, Charm, and I'm going to go mute somebody else. Okay. Is that everybody muted? Nope. Okay. 
Okay, okay. So, uh, this is PyCharm here. Um, you're going to be using PyCharm. I'm going to show you a little bit and ignore my little Pinterest notification. I'm going to be showing you all through this class how we, how to use PyCharm. It's my go to go to integrated development for Python. So, um, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a file. So I'm just going to say new. I'm going to say Python file. And I'm just going to say simple print. Whoops, it didn't quite. But we'll leave that. And then I'm going to edit my configuration here. I'm going to have to add an interpreter. There we go. Okay. So I want to see what the print statement does. So this is this is literally a blank screen. This file is just blank. But all I have to do is type in print. Now, this is just the way PyCharm is these days. It's going to ask me to again configure the interpreter. I'm going to tell them what the interpreter is, and that will go away. So I have just typed in print with an open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis. And this is how we handle functions in Python. You have the name of the function, you have an open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis, and then sometimes there's something between those parentheses. What's between those parentheses is call, are called arguments or parameters. And I will use those, those two terms interchangeably. But if I want to say, hello, I'm going to put a string literal between the open and closed parentheses. So if I try running this, oops, what did I do wrong? Ah, my bad. I have to tell it. Okay, simple print. Okay. There we go. Okay. I don't know why it's being a pain. Um, I don't know. And a configuration. That, that. Um, you need to hit return at the end of the line. Um, well, it's trying to do... All right, let's try that. Nope. It's not doing the correct... It's the edit. The configuration is not right here. Because it's not actually trying to run simple print. It's trying to run uh, file abc.py, which is a file that I had in here previously. So uh, I'm just going to do a new project, start from scratch. OK. Don't worry about this error. It has to do with my Mac and the newest version of PyCharm. So I'm going to add a configuration. If you're lurking to set up your PyCharm, this will be it. Uh, let's see, the interpreter. OK, I'm going to create a new New file, let's do this again. Simple print. Okay. I shouldn't have tried to reuse that project. Okay, print. Now I have no interpreter, which is fine. And now it's finally all set up. Okay, so if I say print, let's see what happens. And I get the word hello printed to the screen. So what did I just do? 
Well, first of all, in PyCharm, you have several different windows. You have the project window over here, which will show you basically your .py files and a, 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 all Python files should end with a .py. That should be their extension. The area here, the big area where my cursor is going around, is the script area. That's where you're going to write your code. The area down here to the bottom of the screen is the output and input area. It's called the console. And as you can see, it output hello. And when we start doing inputs, it's going to, you're going to type in your input there. So that's what I've just done. I've used the print function, and I've said hello to everyone. OK. Um, so that's what basic text output is. And here, here's just your challenges. So this says, write the simplest statement that prints the following, 3, 2, 1, go, exclamation point. So if we take a look at what I have just done in PyCharm, I said print hello. So between the quotes, you could very easily put 3, 2, 1, go, exclamation point, And that would print out the same thing. So when you're looking at doing that particular challenge, it had just, Zybooks had just talked about the print statement. So that's what it wants you to do. And then here's another challenge activity. And this is, again, these are going to be multiple print statements. Instead of a single print statement, you're going to use multiples. So what does a multiple, what do multiple print statements look like? So here I have a single print statement. You'll notice I just hit the Enter key. And I'm just going to say hello again. And if I run this again, I get two lines here, one that says hello and one that says hello again. So I just used the print statement twice. And you will notice that I get a new line at the end of each of these. So somebody, it's like somebody said hello and hit the enter key when they're typing in Word. And then somebody said hello again and hit the enter key like they're typing in Word. Now, one thing to notice up here, I'm going back for a second, is there's this print hello and equal quote space quote, which keeps the print out for the next line as a space rather than a new line. So let me demonstrate that really quick. I'm going to now say print Then I'm going to say after special end. So let's see what happens when I do that. I'm going to hit the Enter key again. I get my hello and hello again lines that we had from 1 and 2. And then here I say hello after special end. Well, that's interesting because I have them in two different print statements. However, I didn't get a, a new line between them. And that's because in on line four, I used end equal quote space quote, which tells Python, don't automatically hit the return key when you're printing stuff out. Use a space instead. This is important because you're going to have a challenge that uses this in this, um, in this module. So um, outputting multiple items with one statement. Let's see. We just talked about that. OK. Input. So we are input process output. We already dealt with output a little bit. Input has a function called input. Now this allows you to input information from the command line. Now this will happen a couple of different ways. When you're using Zybooks, Zybooks is going to basically take your script and it's going to act as if it were the user and send information into your program. When you're doing it with PyCharm, 
somebody's going to be typing that information in. They essentially become the same thing because Zybooks is simply acting like a user. So um, input, to input is a function and it has a return value. So in this case we see best friend equal input and that basically is, um, well I'm going to go now define what a variable is because best friend is a variable. A variable is a named bucket, okay? I like to call it that. So if we think about it like this, you've got water and you've got to carry that water. If I pick up the water in my hands, it's all going to fall out. And me carrying that water around in the palm of my hand won't do anybody any good. If I have a bucket, I can put the water in a bucket and I can carry that bucket around with me. And the water pretty much is still going to be there. Now I can take a Sharpie and I can write a name on that bucket. And in this case, the name on that bucket is best friend and the value is whatever somebody input. So I can then use best friend wherever I want in the program and it will always have that value in it unless I change it. So a variable is something that's very important and it is something that um, you, you should get familiar with very, very quickly. And if you don't, then reach out to your instructor um, because th these are some of the basic building blocks of what make up Python and really any other programming language. So best friend is the name of a place to store data. How do I know that best friend is a variable? Well, best friend is a variable because it is on the left hand side of a single equal sign. There's a single equal sign. On the right hand side is something. It could be the number one. It could be the string hello. In this case, and what we're looking at right here, it is the result of what somebody has input into the program. And that's what input does. Input stops the processing of the program and it waits for somebody to type something in and hit the enter key. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to do create a new file. I'm going to call it simple input. And for simple input, I'm going to say, we'll just use their example. So I'm going to set this as my running program. There we go. And I'm going to run it. So I'm running it and the first thing that comes out to the console is please input the name of your best friend. And I'm going to say the name of my best friend is Holly. And then I'm going to hit the enter key and it's going to print out Holly. So now I'm going to do something because I want you to see what happens during the program execution. Up until now I have, I have told Python, PyCharm to run something. Right now I'm going to tell it to debug. Debug will be, will, will be very helpful to you as you go through your project. But I want to kind of introduce the concept of debugging. Debugging basically allows you to see what happens in your code line by line. So I put a red dot here, which is called the breakpoint, and I said, when I tell you to go, Go up till this point. Now this happens to be the first line of the program. I know that it's debugging because I uh, there's this blue line right here. 
You'll also see that my console isn't the thing that came up. My debugger is the thing that came up. And so what's it going to do? Well, I can do a couple of things. I can sit on this line and do nothing, which I won't do. But I can step over this line of code, and then I can go to the console, and it will say, please input the name of your friend. So I'm going to put in Holly, and then I'm going to go back to the debugger. Oops, did I hit the enter key? I did not. I'm going to hit the enter key which is now going to take me to the next line of code. You'll notice that nothing else happened until I hit that enter key after I'd done the input. It will show me that the, best, the, the value for best friend is Holly. And it's Carol. now going to print. Woods. Hello. Hello. Daryl Woods. Hi, Daryl. Hi. I'm Hi. sorry I'm late. That's fine. You're good. I'm going to mute you, okay? All right. Thank you. No problem. Um, so now I'm going to print best friend, and I'm going to step over it, and it's going to print Holly. So that's what input does. And by the way, we're going to get into types very soon. Um, the type associated with the return from an input is always a string. That probably doesn't, oh, we're going to do it right here, converting types. Okay. There are four types in Python, string, integer, float, boolean. Those are the four basic types. When you're dealing with an input, everything comes in as a string. So you have to convert it. Okay. If I, let me do another little example here. So I'm going uh, new Python file, simple add, OK? So here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take in two pieces of information, and I want to add them together. So I'm going to say print. And then I'm going to input second value. Oops. Okay. Oh, my bad. Input. Okay. Using the I'm using output when I should be using input. So, let's put that in the quotes. Okay. So, I'm going to input two values, and then I want to perform addition. The result. Let's see what happens when I run this. So I'm, go I'm asking the user to put in input the first value, input the second value, and then I'm going to try and add it together. So let me just stop this one. It stopped. I'm going to run simple add. So my, my first value is Lisa, and my second value is Shannon. And it gives me Lisa Shannon, except I can't spell my last name. OK. So it adds two strings together and does pretty much what we would expect. So now let's see what happens when my first value is 1 and my second value is 2. And that's not what 1 plus 2 is. 1 plus 2 is not 12. It's been a while since I took math, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. So what happened? Why didn't it give me 3? It didn't give me 3 because 1 and 2 are strings. This val1 and this val2 are considered strings by Python. So they're no different than Lisa and Shannon. It's just 
a string. To make it be an integer, when I'm, in, when I'm bringing it in from the outside and I'm using the input function, to make it be an integer, I have to convert it. So I have another function provided by Python called int, and it is going to convert val1 and val2. Now you'll notice I didn't just put a big int around val1 and val2. It won't work that way. You have to convert each variable individually. And by the way, and you're probably going to get sick of me over the next few weeks saying this, but I'm going to repeat it a lot up probably through week three. Val1 is a variable. We know it's a variable because it is on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. To the right of that single equal sign is either a value or something that will put a value into val1. val2 is a variable. It is on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. I think to the right of that equal sign is either a value or something that will enter a value into val2. So, result is a variable. Result is going to have, contain as its value, the product of val1 and val2. So now let's see what happens if I run this again and I say val1 is 1 and val2 is 2 and now I get the right answer. And that's because I have told Python to use the right type because as a string, 1 and 2 is 12. As an integer, 1 and 2 is 3. So if you're going to do arithmetic, add, subtract, multiply, divide, any of that stuff you would do, you have to make sure that the type is either an integer or a float. In this case, it's an integer. So that's pretty much what this stuff talked about. And um, okay, okay. Um, so here it talks about read the user input and print it out and print to output. That basically, now you're going to have to read here, but basically, if you're trying to read in user input and print it out, we have that simple input, and that this is very similar to that. And by the way, I provide examples in this class when we go through things, and there are times when I will go through the challenge activities and I will get you started on the labs. But all work has to be your own. This information, everything I do, is shared with all the other instructors. If you take something I've done and you act as if it's your own, you're probably not going to get a good grade because your instructor will already know about it. So what I provide are examples and samples. They're not meant to be the answers and they're not meant to be in lieu of you guys doing your own work. Okay, errors. All kinds of errors happen all kinds of times in Python. There are syntax errors and there are runtime errors. So, a syntax error would me be doing something like this. If I take away that equal sign, I have an error. Now, PyCharm is pretty nice because you'll, all of a sudden you'll see these red things over here. And you'll see this red thing there. And it will say something like unresolved reference val2. Well, that just means that Python doesn't know what to do with that particular word there. And that's because I'm not telling Python what to do with it. Well, what do I need to tell Python to do? Well, I need to put an equal here so that Python knows that val2 is in fact a variable. Without that equal sign, Python's not going to know anything and it's going to throw up its hands and say, don't know what to do here. If I add the equal sign, Python says, oh, okay, this is a variable. I know it's a variable because it's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. And then we'll go off happily to what's on the right-hand side of the single 
sign, and it will say, okay, that's great. Now, there are other kinds of syntax errors. This is a syntax error. I just redid print result. I just typed it twice. This is where a space delimited language, the, the, one of the uniquenesses of a space delimited language is, is displayed. And that's because Python knows that after this closing parenthesis here, there really shouldn't be anything. But there is. So Python throws up its hands and say, this should have been the end of it, but it's not, and you put something else. So I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to call it a syntax error. So if you see something like this, or more likely, if you see something like that, invalid syntax, because you will see these errors, my suggestion is, especially if this is the first thing you typed, is that you just kind of, whoops, you don't do that. Okay. You just either remove that or you make it a comment. That comment says ignore everything to the right of that pound sign. And then if you run it again, everything's running fine. Well, we have one, we have two, and it's three. If I remove that comment or leave that line in there, I go back. So now I know that this is what's causing the syntax error, and then I have to figure out why. So that's what a syntax error is. Python can't figure out what you're trying to do when you're writing this code, so it says, I don't know, and it throws its hands up, and it won't do anything else until you fix it. Now, that syntax error is as good as it gets. We do not, in most programming languages, tell people, You've got two print statements on the same line. The best you're going to get is syntax error. And this is what can be extremely frustrating for people just learning a language because they're getting that red stuff out where they know it's an error, but there's no indication of how to get past that error. Um, and I think this information was already posted in the classes, but if it wasn't, it probably will be. There is now... Um, there should be embedded help for a lot of these things. I haven't exactly tried it yet, but um, they, they're rolling it out this term. So while you're doing your challenges and your labs, there should be information that pops up that helps guide you. Um, I, again, I haven't played with it because I don't change things inside books. Um, let's see, it's participation activity, we have about 15 minutes, um, okay, so style guidelines, I'm going to let you guys read the style guidelines, okay, they are basically just telling you how to make your code look more readable. And I think they're good, and I think you should follow them, because as an instructor, they will make uh, my life easier when I'm reading your code. But it will also make it easier if you ever have to go back to your code. I'm big on style guides and, and best practices when it comes to writing code. Why white space matters? Well, I think we've already talked about that, so I'm not going to worry about going through that. Uh, attention to detail. It's funny, I was talking to my dad a couple weeks ago, and he was always very much into computer hardware, and I've always, always been very much into computer software. And um, he was an engineer and a teacher, and I'm an engineer and a teacher. And he always jokes, he, you know, I was like, well, you know, sometimes, you know, like when you're teaching Java, you've got to remind them, you know, not having that semicolon in the right space is going to cause them a lot of trouble. And he said, that's why I hated programming because you have to be so detail-oriented on every single line. And that's what it's saying here. You really do have to be focused on what's happening and if you, to, to write good programs. So you have to be focused on every line and understand not only what that line is doing, but the lines above and the lines below. So here's an example for a salary calculation. And 
what you're supposed to do here, you're supposed to fix it. Um, so, so it says change the one. Ah, okay. So this is the line, and you guys can fix that. So output art. This is additional practice. I believe it's optional. Uh, I think this is optional. Okay. Lab 1.9. This is the Mad Lab. Mad Lib. So basically, what you're doing here is you are having, you're inputting four different things, and then you're going to output a sentence. So you're going to input Eric Chipotle 12 in cars, and it's going to print out Eric went to Chipotle to buy 12 different types of cars. So here, what you have to do is you have to have an input statement for each one of these variables. And it has to be named this. First name is the name of the variable. Generic location is the name of the variable. Whole number is the name of a variable. And plural noun is the name of a variable. If it's a variable, it's going to be on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. And this particular print notation allows you to concatenate variable values and words, as long as those variable values are strings. So let's do, um, hold on. How important is it to comment these? Sorry, let me go back and look. Uh, how important is commenting in these shorter Mad Libs? Um, as an instructor, I can't see what you've done. Well, I'm sorry, no, I can. Um, on the challenges, I cannot see what you've done. As an instructor, I will actually download the, li the libraries, uh, sorry, the labs themselves. And there is always some part of the um, rubric that talks about comments. So my suggestion is you put enough comments in there so that your instructor understands that you know what you're doing. Okay? And it, it probably doesn't need to be huge. It can be, you know, input variables. And then you have your variables. Um, so that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to use the comments to show the instructor that you understand what it is you're doing. Um, and also because you want those points from the rubric. Um, I'm not going to do all of Madlib, but I am going to get you started on this one because it's the first one that kind of, it, I find a lot of students have, um, I find a lot of students have questions about this. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to say lab 0.9. So what they wanted you to do, and we're just going to do this with just one variable, one input, and you're going to have to extrapolate it to the rest. But I'm going to say first name is input first name and then I'm going to say print first name went to okay so now let's see what happens when I run this Now, one of the things, and I'll change this in just a second, is the way that Zybooks handles print statements, a little, an input statement, sorry, is the way Zybooks handles input statements uh, as opposed to the way I'm doing it in PyCharm, and I'll show you that in just a second. So here, I'm going to say first name, and it's Lisa, and I say Lisa went to. So let's think about this for a second. On line one, I have a variable named first name. 
I know it's a variable because it's on the left hand side of a single equal sign. On the right hand side, I have an input statement. So the, the result, which is what somebody typed in on the keyboard, is going to be placed, that value is going to be placed in first name. Down here on the print statement, I'm going to use the value that was placed into first name to print out. So let's go and do a little bit of debugging here. So the first thing, I'm on line one, okay? I'm going to step over line one, I'm going to go to the console, and it's saying first name. I'm going to type in Lisa. Now, nothing else is going to happen until I hit the Enter key. When I hit the Enter key, it comes down to line three. Now, the nice thing about the debugger in PyCharm is you can see the variable. So my variable, my variable's name is first name. The value associated with that is Lisa. It got that value from me typing Lisa on the command prompt. And so when I reference first name in the print statement, it's going to get the value Lisa from print statement, because uh, sorry, from file name. The sorry, it's going to get the value Lisa from the variable first name. Because remember that bucket we talked about, because you can't carry water in the palm of your hand? Well, the variables, the bucket's name is first name, and what I have put in it is the string Lisa. The other nice thing about the debugger down here, it will also tell you what type it is. And that's not important now. It's going to become important soon. So if I hit the continue, I go to the console, and it says Lisa went to. So basically the print statement says I can take a string and I can use a comma and then I can have a string literal, which is what went to is, and I can add the two together and I can come out with the right string on the other side. So if you're looking for to do uh, lab 1.9.1, .1, that's the beginning of it. So here you're going to have four variables. First name, generic location, whole number, and plural noun. And you're going to take in those. Now, you won't be typing in Zybooks. You're not going to be typing the word Lisa in. Zybooks has different data that it's going to pass in to your program. And it's going to have that in develop mode. It's going to have different ones in submit mode. Yes. Is it required to enter first name in the parentheses? I left it blank, such as input, and it passed. That is not required. That's a very good thing to bring up. What, what, what he's talking about is right here. Okay? So what you're going to do in Zybooks is that. You're not going to ask a question. You're not going to say first name in the input statement. Zybooks doesn't require it. When you're doing it through PyCharm for your projects, you're going to need to remember to put that. Now, this will act I, the same way, but you just won't get the prompt. So I'm going to put Lisa, and it's going to say Lisa went to. So you're very right. You don't need to do that for the input statement. No problem. So for lab 1.19, that's the beginnings of it. That's what you need to do. So you're going to have to do the remainder of it. And remember, there's a develop mode and a submit mode. The develop mode is you're able to play around with it. You can change your code all you want in develop mode. Run the program in develop mode, see what happens. Run the program. By the way, um, if your code requires input, you're going to put it here. So. When you're in develop mode, my, my suggestion is those are your first set of values, okay? Then, because in develop mode you're testing your code, put in a different set of values for the second run and the third run so that you know that your program is truly being driven by the data that you're putting in it. 
Cybooks doesn't require to enter first name, but would you need it need to yes. If you're doing it so with Zybooks, you're worried about making sure things in Zybooks works. When you're doing your projects, okay, whether it be the final project or any of the intermediary stuff, if you are asking, if you're using that input statement, if you're using the input function, you have to tell the professor what they're supposed to be inputting. So you will need to add a prompt in the form of a string as a, para as a parameter to the input function. So this week you're just worried about Zybooks. As the weeks go on, you're going to need to make sure you understand that you have to prompt if you're in PyCharm, if you're doing a project. So uh, basic output with variables. OK. So this is very similar to the last one. Here, Zybooks wants to actually see you put a prompt in. But what's important here is the conversion. This is all about converting an integer. So what you need to do is you need to make sure you are using the appropriate conversion. Okay, We talked about that in, uh, and what was it? Uh, input. Simple add. We talked about that conversion in simple add. And that's what you need to really be concerned with here. You need to make sure you convert your input to an integer. Because without that, none of your stuff is going to work properly. Variables and assignment. We have kind of talked about this. A variable is something on the left of a single equal sign. A single equal sign is not saying A is the same as B. It's saying take the value from the right-hand side and assign it to this named, value, named variable. So you have a value, and you're basically giving it a name. And when you give it a name, you can pass it around. You can do all kinds of things with it. Um, and that's how pretty much all programming languages work. So, um, okay, that's good. Identifiers. Um, so this, these are just what you can name a variable in Python. Now. Python is case sensitive. What does that mean? Case sensitive means that, here, I'll show you real quick. If I change that to capital V, I get my wonderful red line again. And if I run it, I'm going to end up Lisa, and whoops, whoops, I'm running the wrong one. Let me go back to the right one. And we'll go back to add, because that's the one I was doing. Simple add. So I'm going to run simple add, and I'm going to enter my first name, which is Lisa, and my second, sorry, let me stop doing the wrong thing. All right, let me do this again. I'm going to say one, I'm going to say two, and all of a sudden I get Val is not defined. Well, what does it mean val isn't defined? I've defined val1 right here. Well, no, I haven't. I haven't because this has a capital V and this has a lowercase v. To Python, they are different because Python is a case-sensitive language. The only way val1 is val1 is if it's spelled identical, including the case of the letters. So it's a, uh, an, uh, an issue I see a lot of students having. They get very frustrated because they say, but, you know, it's Val. And I'm like, well, it's not. 
So remember that variable names are case sensitive and then there are other rules around uh, creating variable names. So you should become familiar with them and to make sure that you understand. Um, numeric types. All right, so we already talked about int. We have a float. A float is just a number with a decimal place. That's all it is. Okay, and the decimal place can have one decimal place. It can have a hundred, hundred spaces after, a hundred values after the um, decimal place. But that's all a float is. And you'll use float when you're dealing a lot with with things like money and some scientific stuff. Um, here's an example of energy to mass conversion. Um, so that's all a float is. It's got a decimal place. Arithmetic expressions. These are the expressions you can do. So these are what you would do if you were adding, multiplying, dividing numbers. These are the arithmetic expressions and those are the operators. When I use the plus sign, I'm expected to add something. Minus sign, subtract, um, exponent, and probably the only one you haven't, you might not have seen before is the star star which is an exponent. So I would use that potentially to square something if I were having to, let's say, in a lab, uh, square two numbers. So you would see something like that. Um, this is just talking about order of parentheses when you're doing the expressions. It's the same as in math. Um, Let's see. Here you're just doing the calculation and you they want to make sure that you're inputting the right information. And you're getting sorry, that you're inputting when you input the information, you're properly transforming it. Division and modulo, division is just division. Modulo is the remainder. That's what it is. Um, now, there is something called that is unique to Python called the floored division operator. Remember this. You are going to need it in a couple of future labs. Um, and it's used to round down the result of a floating point division. It will also, yeah, you're going to use this in a couple of future labs. So just remember this and I will remind you when we're talking about those modules because it's one of those things that drives people crazy and me too because I don't it, it doesn't exist in any of the other languages that I write in. The modulo operator is just a remainder when you're dividing. Uh, module basics. So um, okay. Okay, so um, short programs or scripts, we're not going to really worry about them that much. Uh, there is the ability to import libraries of code. Um, and they are, it, they're very handy and they, they're, the open source community has many of them and they're great and wonderful. And if you want to do game programming, there are whole module systems out there for game programming. If you're doing environmental sciences, there are whole scientific modules. And basically just a module is a library of code. Somebody's written it, somebody's tested it, and you can use it. The math module is really good. Um, you would import math. That's how, right there, how you get a library of code that's how you give your script access to another library of code. And then you would call functions on it. So there's like power and there's square root and there's all kinds of things in the math module. And these are just some of the um, functions that are in the math module. Um, text. And we will be done here soon. And if you guys have to leave, I understand. I'm just trying to. And by the way, I usually say it's between 9 and 10, but it sometimes goes later. Um, so text is, um, it's either at 
Well, ASCII or Unicode are the two basic forms of text. Every single character has a decimal equivalent, and it's, that's all that there is. And it simply has a representation. So when the computer is looking at it, it's not really looking at the letter E. It's looking at the decim decimal representation 101. Now, you're not going to have to do a whole lot with that. That's just something to know. Here, you are going to have to do something with this, and it will come in the string module. And it is about escaping, OK? So there are certain things you can't do without using special escape characters. And the, the, the backslash, um, the quote, double quote, new line, tab, inside of a string can't be used without escaping them. So. A quick example of that, okay, so if I have stir1, this is a string, okay. So if I run this, it's just going to print this as a string. Nothing extremely exciting about that. Um, however, if I put a backslash here, let's see what happens. This is a string. OK. If I put a quote here, because I want string in quotes, Something bad is going to happen. What's going to happen? Well, it's saying invalid syntax. Well, why is that invalid? I just put the word string in quotes. Well, that's partly because what happened here is that Python thought that was a string. That was the beginning and end. You know, it starts with a quote and it ends with a quote. So everything after that is an error. So what if I wanted to have double quotes inside this string? Well, to do that, I'd have to escape it. And this tells Python, OK, normally you would deal with this as the end of a string. But don't do that right now, because I want it to print out as a character. So when I do this, this is a string comes out. So that's what escaping does. It tells Python to deal with certain characters differently than it normally would. And th these, these, this is, like I said, this is going to become, um, the, you're going to need to, to deal more uh, with escapes when we talk about strings specifically. So I don't think we need lab, divide by x. So this is one of the labs that you're going to, you are going to have to do this week. And it says write a, pro a program using integer, user num, and x as input, and output user num divided by x three times. So if I put in 2,000 and I'm going to divide it by 2, then I should get 1,500 and 250. And notice when they do this output right here, it's all on the same line. So that is when we're dealing with the print statement, when you want to do an end equal quote space quote. So and so here you're going to have a, a single two inputs. It's going to be the value, and it's going to be the 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 x, and then you're just going to say value divided by two, and then you're going to use the result of that to divide again, and the result of that to divide again. So here's where you would simply have a variable for each result. So let me show you just really quick an example of how to start this. So this is going to be lab, one point, what is it, two, one. So I'm going to input two things, and I'm going to say, uh, hold on. 
output num? Is that what they called it? It's going to be user num and x. So we'll just use theirs. So it's going to be user num. And then it's going to be x. Okay, so right off the bat, I have to do a conversion because I'm going to be using these as arithmetic. So right off the bat, you got to do this, okay? And then I've got to convert it because otherwise it won't work right. It'll be like trying to add Lisa and Shannon and it will just come out as Lisa Shannon. So what do I need to do? I'm going to input something, and then it's a divide. So I'm going to say div1, user num, divided by x. Now I want to do it a second time. So I'm not going to say user num divided by x because it won't work. What I will say is it will be div1 divided by x. So this is what I mean by the result. So actually, let's do this. So this is going to be result 1 and then result 2. So, so this is what that the beginning of that looks like. All right, you're going to take in and convert. You have to remember to do the conversion. And then you have to have, you have to, so to do this properly, you're going to start with user num, but then you're going to use the result from the first calculation and the result from the second calculation for the third one. So that is how you start this. And then you have to figure out how to do the printout statement with the end. Okay. So um, this is very similar to what we've talked at, and they actually give you the calculations here. So what you're doing here is we've already done it. You're inputting. So you, they tell you here if the input is this. So you know you're going to have to take four things as input, age, weight, heart rate, and time. And by the way, if this is if you're using those calculations and you're using their variables, it's got to be a capital A. And then it, you simply print out the result of that calculation. And here's what they're telling you how to output the floating point value, because that's going to be something that you guys haven't done. So you want to do this exactly like this says, which means you're going to have calories man as a variable, and that's going to be the variable name that you will put the results from this calculation, sorry, from this calculation will go into that variable. Um, warm up. Okay, so this is inputs and type conversions. We've talked about inputs and type conversions. And um, this is the first time you will have used this format. So you're going to start with this in Zybooks. And then you're going to expand it to this. And you're going to expand to that. So, um, so you're basically, um, yeah. So you're supposed to do this in steps. Um, sorry, my brain turns off at 10 o'clock. I apologize. You're supposed to do this in steps. And basically what you're doing is you are simply asking for input. And then you're going to output that information. And you have to ask and do, sorry, when you ask for the input, you also have to convert it to the appropriate thing. 
and then you're going to reverse your output. You're going to ask for input, you're going to output it one way, and then you're going to reverse your output. So you're just outputting them in separate orders, and then you're going to do a conversion from float to integer. Um, and that brings us to lab to module two, which is string basics, and we'll do that next week. So before I sign off, does anybody have any questions? Okay. So I am going to then stop sharing. I'm going to stop the recording, and this should be up for my class tomorrow, and I will also send it out to the uh, other instructors tomorrow. So everybody have a good evening.